You ever wonder how long you should hold on to a shot before you release? Me too. Let's find out. Morning guys. Today we're out in the backyard and we've got the lab coat on again today. Now, I hear a lot of people talking about when you when you come to full draw and you're uh, you're getting ready to uh, take a shot. The longer you hold on to the ammo, the slower your ball will go. Now, is this really a concern? I've never tested this before, but I tend to try to shoot my shots within three seconds. I do one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and let them rip. That's what I do. Um, it's got to be within that first three seconds. And I think really three seconds is more than enough time to get on target and take your shot. If I find that I had to adjust or move around or whatever it is, I'd usually abort the shot and then try again. Although I have gone longer, I never had an issue getting on target. So, uh, that said, oh, the sun's just killing me. So, so that said, um, today I think we should try out my three second, then we'll go to five second, then 10 second, then 15 seconds. And let's see um, what the speed difference is. And if really we should be concerning ourselves with this, if we're with, within shooting within the first five seconds. Now, just think about this. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. That's a lot of time to be trying to get on target to take a shot. To go to 10 seconds or 15 seconds just seems ludicrous to me, but... Who knows? Maybe you're chasing a squirrel around and he's moving around. You're just waiting for him to stop so you can let the shot rip. So that's what I figured. We'll go up to 15 seconds and see what happens. Before we get into that, I'm going to turn you guys around and I'm going to show you the new sexy slingshot I got in my pocket. So let's check it out. Well, today we're going to be shooting this, this beauty here. This is the S Lizard from Sniper Sling. What a beautiful frame. I absolutely love this. The green color is beautiful. Got a nice mosaic pin on there. The fit and finish is just about perfect, except for this. Dun, dun, dun. We got a little bit of a, a little bit of a bubble in the resin there. Ah, it's not the end of the world, but I would have preferred it to be perfect. It's the first time I've ever had any kind of issue from a, from a slingshot from Sniper Sling, but it is what it is. I will be doing a review on this guy pretty soon, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But man, let me tell you. I really love the way this frame feels and holds and looks. It's just gorgeous. And all that carbon in there just comes alive in the sunshine. I don't know if it's picking it up out here, but really, really cool. Even down here, I got some blue and red flakes in there. So cool. Anyway, the bands we're using today are Sniper Sling 0.6, tapered from 22 to 12, and we've got a Sniper Sling pit locating pouch on there uh, just for shits and giggles, shooting 8 mil steel. And this is what we're going to be doing our test with today. All right, that's them warmed up. Let's get that corny set up and we'll take a couple of shots. Uh, three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, and 15 seconds, and then we'll talk about the results. Okay, so the crony set up in feet per second. We're 10 meters away, and I think I'm going to take three shots uh, of each time duration, and we'll see what kind of speeds we get. So we'll start off with the three seconds first. I'll try to count them out so you can hear them. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. 237.2 feet per second. Now, keep in mind, guys, these bands are not maxed out or any, these are set up how I like to shoot them. So, here we go. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. 239.7. And the third shot. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. 234. So, that's three seconds. We're going to go ahead and do... Five seconds now. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. That's 226.3. So we're already seeing a drop with those extra two seconds. Here we go. 
One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. 224.8. Last shot. <clears throat> One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. 227.8. Okay. Now we're going to try 10 seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi. 209.0. Man. Let's try it again. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi. 211. All right, last shot. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi. 210.4. All right, you know what? Just for shits and giggles, I am going to do the 15 second, but I think we've already got our proof here. That's a big difference. Here we go. One shot. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi, eleven Mississippi, twelve Mississippi, thirteen Mississippi, fourteen Mississippi, fifteen Mississippi, two hundred two point three. Proof's in the pudding. Now, just just for fun. We're going to go ahead back and take a three-second drop and see what happens. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. 236.4 feet per second. So pretty much between, <laughs> between three seconds and 15 seconds, a total of 12 seconds difference, we dropped about 30 feet per second. Now, these bands are not slow bands. We're actually shooting in the cold. And we're shooting, uh, they're not maxed out at all. I've got plenty of stretch on these bands. Have a look. Way past my head. But it would make no difference shooting light draw or maxed out bands or whatever it is. It will not make a difference. Holding your bands longer really makes a big difference on your speed. So I know in the near future, my buddy Robert Persley is going to be actually doing a video very similar to this. But it's going to be more geared towards you sling rifle guys. Um, Hopefully he gets that done, that video done pretty soon. And uh, you guys should go check out his channel. He's got a lot of good information in there and he's a really solid shooter. Sorry guys, what can we say about these, uh, this little test that we did here today? Well, first, first things first, let's talk about, about consistency and uh, why this, this test here today was important. For true accuracy, you need to have a few things. Consistency is key. So that's consistency of your gear, consistency of your posture, consistency of, of whole time, the consistency of weather, all of that's important. Now, the weather thing, we'll put that aside because that's kind of tough. Temperatures change on a day-to-day -day basis. To, to be able to combat that comes experience. Now, the second thing uh, that's important is what we're talking about here today is our, is our hold. Now, we are holding that band set for 3, 5, 10, and 15 seconds. And we did some... We did some tests and we saw consistently consistently how bad that that those speeds dropped. Now, over a 10 meter distance, is that going to make all that much of a difference? Well, I saw a difference because on every single shot, I was aiming at that flipper. In the beginning, we were hitting it and the longer we went, the slower we went, the shots started dropping earlier and earlier. So that said, as we were shooting, the ball went up and came down and landed right on target. Pretty good. Now, as we started waiting a little bit longer, we started seeing a bigger drop in speed and that means that our arc was happening sooner and our drop was handling, happening so, uh, sooner which means that we are em end up landing low on the site on the on the shot which is a bit of an issue now you can imagine over long dis longer distances this is going to cause an issue so i think the proof is in the pudding we need to when we're setting up our shots we need to set up hold them have a mental timer going on on how far we want to go if we get past that shot abort the shot come back and shoot again and that way you'll be more consistently uh shooting 
accurately uh, as you go forward. Now, I want to address a little bit about my band tests. Now, when I test bands, I shoot 24 to 12 because that's the fastest um, a taper I have found basically shooting um, uh, out of the tests that I've done. Now, I continued with that taper because I've done all my other tests like that. I don't do that. I, I don't shoot that normally on a regular basis. Normally what I shoot is 22 to 12 because it gives me a lighter draw. Yeah, they're a little bit slower, but they give me a, it gives me a lighter draw and for me to hold on to actually makes me a little bit of an accurate shooter. Also, when I do my band tests, I test my bands at absolute max uh, that they can go. So they stop right at my anchor and they always tend to stretch out a little bit, which gives me a little bit more. So I pull them back more to shoot them just to see how it goes. When I'm shooting personally, I don't max out my bands. I don't. I don't need to reach 315, 320 feet per second when 270 is enough and gives me a lighter draw, which also makes me more accurate. So when I'm doing these band tests, I'm just trying to show you the, the max potential of these bands, of this elastic. When you're at home and you're actually testing these bands out, you don't need to get that speed. The 300 plus feet per second thing, it's not that important. It really isn't. Just get out take your shots, feel a good band set. And when you start shooting more accurately because your, your, your draw is lighter, the bands are smoother, you'll get better life out of your elastic and that's how it works. This is just one, one other little step in the whole consistency deal that we should probably be looking at because look at the difference. 30 feet per second over 12 seconds difference from three to, from our starting point to our finishing point to 15 feet per second. You guys can do what you want with this information. But to me, I'm going to continue doing what I do. And that's my three second drop and shooting. And uh, if I go a little more, it's not the end of the world. But just keep in mind, if you're holding up to five, six, seven, eight seconds, you, you could be uh, uh, significantly slowing down your shots. And when you're, especially when you're out hunting, that could be an issue. Just food for thought, guys. Do this what you want. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching. You guys stay safe. Get out and practice. Be good to each other. I'll see you again soon. I love you guys. You're freaking awesome. Take care for now. Sorry, guys. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, going forward in the future, I'm going to be trying to do some more of these, uh, these band tests and these experiments to try to, you know, give you guys the best information I can and uh, help you guys out become more consistent shooters. Anyway, on this end screen here, I'm going to attach a couple of videos here for you guys to check out. Maybe some tutorials and maybe some more band tests. Anyway, that's it for me for now. You guys take care, stay safe and shoot straight, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.